When you play a Game of Thrones, you win or you die. Winter is coming to Westeros, but let's hope that spring is coming to crypto. Watch on in order to see our reveal of the true king. I am Molly Jane, Stormborn of the House Satoshi, first of her hash, the Unchained, Queen of the Exchanges and the First Coins, Khaleesi of the Segregated Witness, Breaker of Blockchains and Mother of Satoshi Nakamoto, and this is your weekly Game of Hodls. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in my kingdom. What is dead may never die. This week, Craig Wright, creator of Bitcoin SV and self-proclaimed Satoshi Nakamoto, embarked on a legal crusade against those who publicly questioned his claims to the throne of Bitcoin's father. As a result, a number of exchanges, powerful houses of Binance, Kraken, and Shapeshift, joined forces in delisted Wright's brainchild, Bitcoin SV. Many in the community have long dismissed Wright's claims to be the father of Bitcoin, calling him a fraud. Among them was a Twitter user, Hodlanot, the initiator of the Lightning Torch. Wright set a $5,000 bounty for whoever will discover the true identity behind Hodlanot, saying he intended to sue him for libel and defamation. At that point, many in the crypto community took Hodlanot's side, pushing the campaign, hashtag we are all Hodlanot, where many adopted Hodlanot's avatar picture as a sign of solidarity. The campaign reportedly used the Lightning Network to raise around $30,000 to support Hodlanot's legal battle against Wright. But the hardest blow for Wright came from major crypto exchange Binance, which decided to delist Bitcoin Satoshi's vision as it allegedly no longer meets the platform standards. Binance's CZ had previously warned Wright about the imminent delisting if Wright continued claiming that he is Satoshi. Kraken, Shapeshift, and other exchanges followed Binance's example, causing the value of BSV to crash by 20%. But Hodlanot is not the only one Wright threatened with legal actions. He sent legal notices to a number of prominent people, all of which have previously accused him of being a fraud. Among them, Ethereum's co-founder Vitalik Buterin and prominent podcaster Peter McCormick. McCormick was the only one to publish a letter from Wright's lawyers, where he is asked to publicly apologize to Wright and delete all of the defamatory tweets. McCormick didn't look intimidated, and he doubled down on his claims, saying that he will gladly go to court to demonstrate once and for all that Craig Wright is not Satoshi Nakamoto. The lawsuit, seeking damages of £100,000 or almost $130,000, was filed in the High Court of Justice, Queen's Bench Division. It also seeks an injunction to prevent McCormick from publishing similar comments in the future. While the seven kingdoms of crypto have largely rallied against him, Wright can still count on a few allies from the House of BSV. Calvin Iyer, founder of CoinGeek and strong supporter of Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, and Jimmy Wynn, president of Bitcoin Association and Enchain chairman. We reached out to Peter McCormick asking him to comment on the imminent legal battle. We also contacted Jimmy, who will tell us his perspective on the issue. So Peter, why did you decide to take on this legal battle? Um, because somebody needs to stand up to him. Um, he's a bully, and he's a liar, and he's a fraud and he is defrauding people and you know I, I i don't know i mean there was no big grand plan here i just saw the fact that he issued papers to hodler naught i thought i saw the papers i thought they were a joke and i was like right well let's get my own papers let's get them out in the public domain let everyone realize what he's putting out there he's claiming to be satoshi nakamoto and that he is not and that was a fraud and you know some people say just ignore him but I think let's do it once and for all, let's go to a court and let's try and prove it. And look, there is high risk. I could lose. Of course I could lose. But I've got very interesting legal teams, both this are in, in London and in America, who are very, very happy to support me pro bono and uh, represent me in this because the mounting of evidence that proves that he is a fraud and the mounting of evidence that proves that he is not Satoshi Nakamoto. You previously claimed that bringing Wright to court is in the public interest. What do you mean by that? Because he essentially leads a billion dollar value protocol. Bitcoin SV was valued, I'm not sure if it is still now, but it was valued at over a billion dollars. He is telling people that this is the original Bitcoin, this is Satoshi's vision. He has convinced a, a large number of people that this is true and people are investing their money into this and they're going to lose their money. They're going to get wrecked. 
because the protocol will die. The protocol has no use and has no value, but he is doing that. He is convincing people because they think he is the guy who, who wrote the original white paper, which he didn't. So the public interest is for this project to die, die because it takes people away from what the real and the true Bitcoin is. Why do you think it's so important for Craig Wright to demonstrate that he is Satoshi? Perpetuate his fraud. That's the only reason. To, to continue to have the doubt in people's minds or to continue to convince people that he is so he can push his fraudulent scam coin, BSV, forward and, and, and for his own personal benefit. And probably, there's probably some like narcissistic, grandiose reasons behind it as well. Thanks, Peter. Jimmy, you have been among Craig Wright's and Bitcoin's SV's strongest supporters. What do you think about the BSV delisting? Uh, I think it is setting a terrible precedent for the cryptocurrency industry. Um, exchange CEOs should not be making business decisions about whether to list or delist assets of their customers and of investors around the world because of their personal feelings about an individual backer supporter of a particular coin. Um, the problem with what has happened is that it removes objectivity from the role of exchanges who have a fiduciary responsibility to protect their customers' digital assets. You have every right to pursue your legal remedies. Um, exchange CEOs such as the Binance and Kraken CEO disagree with that. They don't like that. But that's whether he is pursuing his legal remedies correctly or not, that's for a court of law to decide. It's not for exchange CEOs to say, I don't like that and therefore I'm going to delist a token that is far bigger than Craig Wright. There are people and companies, entrepreneurs and miners all around the world that work on BSV beyond Craig. And it creates subjectivity, the potential for market manipulation in the future. But Kraken delisted BSV not because of Jesse Powell's personal decision. They did a Twitter poll. Well, let's talk about that. Do you want Twitter polls deciding digital asset listings of exchanges that are regulated at some level around the world? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Can you imagine NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange taking a poll to say, you know what, Elon Musk, did a TV interview where he was smoking pot. Should we delist Tesla? That is not what you should do. And the poll is not even of just their customers. It's of an entire community of people interested in cryptocurrency, including, as you know, people in different camps who don't like other coins, right? So it's polling this big community, including a lot of people who may not like BSV, um, and saying, should we delist? It leads to mob rule. And of course, it can be easily manipulated in game because they claim 70,000 users voted in this Twitter poll. We don't know if there's 70,000 unique people. A lot of people have multiple accounts under anonymous names. There are bots that can be easily used to manipulate Twitter polls and buy votes. That's a good point. But do you actually believe Craig Wright is Satoshi? Well, first of all, I don't think it matters whether he is or not with respect to whether Bitcoin SV should be listed or not listed on an exchange. We have never asked a single person to buy, invest, support, mine Bitcoin SV based on whether or not Craig is Satoshi Nakamoto. We've always been clear saying we have a vision for the original protocol and design of Bitcoin. We're the only project following that. And if you believe in that vision, that's why you should support Bitcoin SV. Bitcoin SV lost 20% of its value this week. What will be the impact of the delisting on this future of the currency? I think it'll clearly, obviously, it's had a temporary effect, but long term, I think the coin will survive and thrive because of its fundamentals. If you look at the people who work in our ecosystem, they're all building things to try and build real world value and utility, which is why we're trying to scale bigger, to have lots of transactions and generate lots of minor fees for the miners. It's about real world utilities that long term it has real, sustainable, less volatile value. There will be a dip in the price, uh, I believe, temporarily, and we'll see how long it lasts because of the delistings. But when one door closes, others open. I predict the trading volumes are just going to move to other exchanges. Thanks, Jimmy. Peter, what do you think? Can Binance's decision to delist BSV be considered an act of censorship? I think it's a weak and lazy argument because these are private businesses. The private business has to make the decisions it wants to make for its business. I mean, you look at Binance, there's 1,500 coins and coin market cap that they don't list. Should they list all of them? My view is this is a fraud and it needs to be closed down. People don't like it, go and move to another exchange. So if you and Wright actually end up in court, what are the possible scenarios here? The best case scenario is we go to court 
and we've proved that uh, Craig Wright is a fraud and he disappears from the space. Hopefully, with any luck, he'll end up in prison because I believe he's committed a crime which, which deserves uh, a prison sentence. So he is defrauding and conning people and people will lose money from him because of this. I think he should be in prison. Uh, and with any luck, that will happen. And sadly, people may lose money because they've invested in BSV and I feel very sorry for them if they do, but I can't do anything about that. I think the worst case scenario is that we go to court and I'm not able to prove that he isn't so he can perpetuate his life further. I just don't think they will go to court because th there is a mountain of evidence that proves he is a fraud. What do we say to the bear market? Not today. Forbes published a list of 50 blockchain related companies with a minimum revenue or valuation of $1 billion. While cryptocurrencies are still far from becoming mainstream, the underlying technology is gaining traction in many sectors. Besides crypto-related companies like US-based exchanges Coinbase and Ripple, the list mentions large corporations such as Facebook, Amazon, and Walmart. As you may guess, these companies are not that much interested in the initial vision of blockchain as a global, decentralized network. Rather, they are using blockchain to power private centralized networks and speed up business processes, increase transparency, and save billions of dollars, according to Forbes. For instance, Forbes mentions the case of DTCC, or Depository Trust and Clearing Corp, which provides custody for most of the world's securities for a total of $48 trillion. In the next few months, the company will realize the largest live implementation of blockchain ever by transferring to the blockchain all information on their $10 trillion worth of credit derivatives. The majority of the companies in the Forbes list are using Ethereum and the Hyperledger Fabric, a blockchain framework hosted by the Linux Foundation. According to International Data Core, Forbes reports, total government and corporate expenses in crypto in 2019 will reach $2.9 billion, which is 89% higher than 2018. By 2022, this sum should hit $12.4 billion. The night is dark and full of scams. And now to more big business on blockchain tech. If you need evidence of serious big-time adoption, look no further than Nestle and Carrefour getting together with IBM's blockchain to track instant mashed potatoes on the blockchain. That's right, the two food giants are on IBM's Food Trust blockchain platform to track the supply chain of the popular brand Mousseline for French people who were too busy to do this. Here's how it works. Shoppers pick up a packet in a store, scan a QR code, and get the entire life story of the potato, from birth to early childhood. Mr. Potato Head is a mystery no more. This, of course, is nothing new. There are about 5 million food items that are currently using blockchain for their supply chain. An industry that started out as a baby potato is fast becoming the baked potato it was always meant to be. US supermarket chain Albertsons is also getting in on the action. It is using food trust to track lettuce, but they hinted that more products could follow. This is just the tip of the iceberg. The whole idea of this is to give consumers greater transparency in the food sector. As Carrefour stated, by simply scanning a product using a smartphone, consumers will receive reliable and unfalsifiable information on the supply chain and production. Here with us is the global marketing leader for IBM Food Trust. Hey Nigel, so what is IBM Food Trust blockchain platform? So IBM Food Trust is an ecosystem of different food and beverage companies. And so we have small scale farmers all the way to large retailers in our network. And what's really exciting is they're able to share transaction data um, in a way that's important for their businesses and also for society. So why did you choose instant mashed potatoes? So <laughs> um, in France, mashed potatoes, is a, um, this particular product, Muslin, is is really famous. It's, um, it's something that the French uh, uh, diners really enjoy. So we chose mashed potatoes because it was an exciting product um, for us. And in fact, when I say we, it was Nestle and Carrefour working together. What's really exciting is for consumers to see the farms where this was produced, to understand the different composition of um, potatoes that went into it. They can actually see photos and different media about the places where this, the potatoes originated. Then they get to see where it went to. What is the greatest challenge that the supply chain industries face, and how does blockchain solve this? Typically, it takes about a week or so, sometimes several weeks, um, to understand where a, um, a problem occurs in the food uh, supply chain. With blockchain, that situation can be resolved within seconds, meaning we can find out where something ended up in the entire supply chain in seconds. And so we've already proven that out um, last year. The other aspects is in terms of things like food fraud, so the provenance of our food. 
Um, so many times we've been hearing in the media about fraudulent food that's entering into our food system. So we know about honey, for example. We know about seafood. Seafood is a really good example. Food is quite easy to tamper with. How can your tech guarantee transparency? Um, I think what you're getting at is garbage in is garbage out. And so how can we trust the veracity of information that's being put onto the blockchain? So um, one of the things that um, would that speaks to that is the fact that for the first time, you basically have a digital fingerprint. And so in terms of entering data, um, what blockchain does that the current system doesn't do is it basically keeps track of the person entering the data. It's basically like a digital fingerprint. And so if Molly enters data into the blockchain, um, there's a fingerprint on there that says Molly entered the data. If I upload data, there's a fingerprint on there that says Nigel entered the data. And what that does is it increases the level of accountability because we're held to higher standard. Um, we can't hide behind our uh, nefarious actions if that's what we chose to do. What's next for the IBM Food Trust platform? Adding different types of technologies and analytics. So you can add IoT, so Internet of Things, sensor or data to look at temperature ranges and look at inventory across the supply chain. You can then do things like add analytics capabilities to get additional insights, machine learning, artificial intelligence. And so by building upon a data and adding different capabilities that we have, uh, we can get further insights to increase um, business value and to bring um, fresher, safer, and more sustainable food to everyone. Dracaris! This week, the beloved Parisian landmark, Notre Dame, went up in flames, and the rich and the poor around the world rushed in to raise funds for its restoration. An architecture competition was even announced for its spire. Now, somehow, crypto is factoring into the equation. France's Minister for the Digital Sector, Cedric O, is apparently pro-crypto. He said this week that he is open to allowing crypto donations to fund the reconstruction of Notre Dame. To date, the French government has launched a website that accepts donations, but so far it does not accept cryptocurrencies. With nearly $1 billion already raised, it is hard to see how much crypto donations will help at this point. But Monsieur O said the same conditions would apply to crypto donations as those for fiat. Organizations must not charge commission, data should be collected for tax deductions, and funds should ultimately be routed via one of four approved organizations. The Cointelegraph-backed blockchain event, Blockcho, also launched an appeal. In addition, major global crypto exchange Binance also launched its own crypto donation program. French journalist and Bitcoin bull Gregory Raymond actually launched hashtag Notre Dame Cryptos. So far, it has raised just over 0.2 Bitcoin, around $1,200. We spoke to him about his efforts. When the fire happened, like everyone in France, I was shocked and I thought what I could do uh, for my own part. So I started a fundraising campaign to you know, raise Bitcoins around the world. Uh, and the next morning, I woke up to a lot of messages on Twitter. Uh, and, and that made me wonder. I was full of questions. Uh, I was suspected of a scam at first, but um, it's true that I was very uh, emotional at the time and perhaps I launched the campaign a bit clumsily because no one really knows uh, who I am as a, as a public figure. So I joined with several uh, key players in France, including Coin Circle, which is the oldest French association that works with uh, cryptocurrencies. And they helped me create a multi-sig wallet so basically, it would be impossible for me to do an exit scam. People are rather happy uh, with the initiative um, in the general public. Uh, for once, we don't talk about Bitcoin in terms of buying drugs or weapons over the internet, and we can see the possibility of a positive social impact. Well, see, how it came about is I was contacted by his office to find a solution. So we are currently discussing uh, a solution and maybe in the next few days, the government uh, will make an announcement and we will be able to tweet that you can send your Bitcoin to the government address. Uh, if we get to this point, I will be extremely happy and satisfied that we could uh, make this contribution. I agree with that. But as you can see, the amounts that have been collected in Bitcoin are relatively modest. It's mostly the social experience behind it. And I think it's a good thing that we talk about Bitcoin all over the world. And maybe more initiatives will be set up. So we promised you to reveal the true king. And the true king is... Like, subscribe, and hodl. And remember to keep your queen warm. Cointelegraph. 
like, subscribe, and hodl.